Hey guys, it's Massive Dynamic here, and uh, today we're doing a short video on trade train loading strategies. That uh, we're just going to go over a few things, and uh, I'm not I'm going to try not to give you any opinions on these things, uh, but strictly show you how they work uh, or fail, um, and just uh, maybe to give you some tips on how to load and unload trains in a practical and effective manner uh, some of these are more effective than others and that's all i'm going to say about that so let's get right into it first of all let me say that um this is my creative world so i have some creative cheat items in here that you're not going to have in your vanilla game uh, but you should know about that um, and so it's just so that we can uh, produce and destroy items to show uh, how uh, how materials flow uh, input and output flow through these different systems so we can take a look at how they work without having to worry about mining so here we go so first of all we have uh, yellow inserters and I've uh, set the stack size to one so this is very early game and if you want to load a train with the yellow inserter and even if you have a full belt and you try to load with yellow inserters with a stack size of one you'll see that that is going to be painfully slow so and especially if you just use it off of one belt like this i see a lot of new players do this they'll run just uh, one belt or sometimes they'll even split off that belt and try to load two or three or four wagons with a single belt worth of material and this is a full belt of material here um, but you can see how slow that is. Now let's go ahead and set that, uh, we'll take that off so that it loads the full three at a time and we'll shift right and shift left click to get three at a time instead per hand. So we can see it goes a little bit faster, um, but that is just painfully slow. So try not to do that guys. I, I said I wouldn't give you an opinion, but this is just, it's painful to watch so try not to do that um, and then we'll let that fill up while we look we're going to skip down we're going to skip this one until that one fills up and because then we'll unload it and we'll look at how it unloads um, so here we have uh, with blue inserters and i think i have no i did not override the stack size um, technically i probably should let's go ahead and override the stack size to uh let's say let's well one would be the start so let's go ahead and do that and we'll we'll set those up like that so that we're loading at their slowest possible speed with blue inserters and let's go ahead and turn this guy on let's see how that does uh you'll see that obviously they're quite a bit faster uh but still pretty slow, but manageable. It's manageable for early game. And then obviously if we, oh, and, and of course now instead of loading on just the belt like we were here, now we're splitting uh, one belt uh, and using uh, all of the available input to spread it out evenly, fairly evenly across uh, all six inserters uh, so, and also we're using chess as a buffer so that when the train pulls out the uh, buffer can continue to load and that will help with load times on the train and we're going to see that that's loading quite a bit faster all right how are we doing over here they are almost done filling that uh, car up so we'll let that continue to work and then we'll take a look at so there's that method of uh, just bringing one belt in I'm using yellow belts right now. We'll upgrade everything to yellow, to red, and then blue belts just to take a look at the difference in in the uh, material delivery speeds and how that affects things. But let's see where are we at. We are on, we're still on uh, stack size of one here, and that's that's going to load that at not too terrible of a pace. Fine for the early game. Now these, I haven't messed with the stack size on these stack inserters, so they're fully upgraded at 12 um, items per handful. 
and we're using the same this is a yellow belt worth of material coming in and split the same way and so let's go ahead and turn that one on and see how that does and we'll see that's going to now we're going to be limited instead by instead of by the inserter speed now we're limited by the belt capacity because that's only delivering 30 items per second so we can see that basically only four inserters are even working on that yellow belt because the yellow belt just cannot deliver enough material to keep uh, all the inserters busy uh, so here we have a slight upgrade to that system where we bring in a yellow belt into um, stack inserters this time just two stack inserter sets and we have a yellow belt uh, basically two yellow belts coming in this is not like we wouldn't bring in one yellow belt and then split it and then split it again this is two separate yellow belts full of material let's take a look at how that does and that should be a little bit better these are again full uh, 12 item per stack inserters oops we turn that unloader off over there i had that on earlier let's set this one too turn that one off too so that we don't have any misconceptions about what's happening so we can see that that is filling fairly rapidly and that one also now we're kind of limited by the uh, inserter speed at this point because uh, the inserter has to load grab 12 items off the yellow belt which the yellow belt is delivering very slowly so again it's it's a combination this time of the uh, yellow belt's delivery and the inserter speed on that one uh, but obviously it is filling a little bit faster than that method because at least now we have four arms working that uh, as hard as they can work under the circumstances and here's a system that i've seen players use too where they bring in one belt and then use a series of splitters to bring, to make it like a, a tree and uh, distribute the items so let's take a look at how that works for us and we'll see that uh, it does uh, deliver the materials across the entire uh, array so that all the all the inserters are getting something and so that goes at that speed which is limited once again by the yellow belts capacity okay so um, these, uh, I would say these, these four down here are fairly viable uh, for loading situations. And okay, so now um, let's take a look at these. These I'm going to call these top two the bad ideas. Um, don't just it's it's just ineffective to load and unload this way. Um, let's see, what am I going to do if I turn this off? Let's turn off the supply because I think we've got a full wagon here. So we'll just use up what's left on the belt and we'll go ahead and uh, unload these uh, uh, yellow belts first. And we can see that once again, when you unload onto one side of the belt, you have to do something, some kind of way you have to, you have to get the material onto the other side of the belt. So we just use a splitter here to uh, make sure that we put get the items onto both sides of the belt so that it unloads everything and we'll see that that will take a while to unload and let's see what capacity are we at okay that's at full three three stack uh three items per, per stack uh capacity that's still going to be really slow and uh I, once again i would not recommend unloading onto one side of a belt that just does not work very well you can see that these inserters here can't even do anything because the belt is full by the time it gets there even with the yellow belts so we're going to see something similar here with blue belts here's how this works it's faster because blue belt or blue uh, inserters are faster um, but it's still fairly ineffective loading to one side of the belt yeah except now um, most of the hands are inactive because the inserters are faster than the belt so that doesn't work very well 
Okay, so let's take a look at unloading with uh, blue inserters onto this branching technique and take a look at how this works for us. Okay, so we can see that we end up with this side of the belt getting clogged up. Oh, these few items get stuck here. So there's a couple ways you can fix that. One is you can output priority to the left, which means that nothing should come out this way. So if I just stand right here and pick up that little bit that's on the end of that belt. Now nothing gets stuck and everything ends up going to, through the uh, inserter. So that's not too bad. And another thing you can do here is you can use a filter. A lot of people like to use, uh, say, uh, let's see, some oddball thing like fish or decon planner. And you can set it to the right so that it shows that on the right side nothing is coming through. That's kind of a nice visual to tell you what is happening with that that uh, splitter. Oh, I forgot to shut that. Let me shut that off. Let's shut the supply off here so that this is not an endless loop because we want to off. We want to uh, upgrade this to red belts in a second and take a look at how they work. So we'll let that continue to unload. All right. So let's take a look at uh, using stack inserters. Oh, I should have shut that off. Let's see, this is full. Yeah, shut all these off. We're going to end up with all these chests full too, and I didn't want that, but that's all right. Shut all those off so that they stop loading these chests. All right, so let's take a look at stack inserters using this same method. And once again, we could use the filtered inserter. Let's go ahead and do that. Since we already know that that does help. And we'll turn that on. And we'll see that once again we are limited by the yellow belt. Um, but this will fill the yellow belt obviously. The blue inserters fill the yellow belt in this arrangement. Um, and they overfill it in this range. Well they just can't, they just can't un unload in this arrangement. In this one, they, they do fill the yellow belt. And they're going to continue to unload that train as fast as it loads. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy that again. And put it down here for this arrangement with only using four inserters instead of six. Let's take a look at how that goes. So as you can see with stack inserters, four is plenty for a yellow belt. Works just fine. You don't need all six. So that saves some material and gives you some options as far as getting your material out away from the train. Because uh, you have a couple of extra spaces to work with as far as if you want to do some fancy stuff with loading or unloading from both sides or loading from both sides. Or you could pass a couple of belts uh, through, through the middle here which might be handy. And finally, let's look at this tree design. Now we're going to see some flaws in this thing. And so let's turn that on and we'll look at that. So the big problem here is that all of the inserters are loading onto the one side of the belt. So we end up with just half a lane coming out of there. So we have to do something to mitigate that problem. What you can do is add some belts like in this kind of arrangement so that you get the belts full of course that looks kind of ugly but it does end up with a full belt coming out and obviously stack inserters are way too much capacity for a single yellow belt um, I mean, not, I shouldn't say way too much capacity, but they absolutely fill a yellow belt easily. Uh, so that's no problem. So that's one way that you could handle that. 
um, issue. Um, there's many ways that, uh, that you could use to handle it. You could do something like this up here, where you just uh, kind of rebalance the belt output one time. Uh, you could use a combination with uh, the fil the the, um, the uh, filter splitter to where it, you block off the unused lanes. Uh, you could do that in combination with this to make sure that you just end up with one yellow belt. But we're not going to get into that. I'll leave that to your imagination to figure that stuff out. Um, so, all right, let's see here. Let's go back up to the top. Looks like this is done here so we're gonna from now on we're just gonna leave the unload turned on so you can see what's happening and we're gonna upgrade from yellow to red up here let's just do this section right here from yellow to red and we'll turn this on and see what happens to so these poor yellow inserters you can see they're just They're working as hard as they can work. And even the blue inserters are doing all that they can do to try to keep up with the red belt in this configuration, but um, they cannot deliver. You know what? That's on the wrong side. Why didn't I see that before? You guys probably saw that. I missed it. Uh, let's see here. So we wouldn't. Uh, want to do it like that because we're not loading the belt properly so let's go ahead and get a splitter and do it like this and like this and like this that and then upgrade that to red There. Sorry about that before, guys. That was a mistake on my part. We could actually eliminate that splitter altogether and do it like that. I don't know how I missed that. Uh, but you can see that we're not filling that red belt. Mostly because our inserters can't. Uh, they're still not working. They're still not getting the materials onto the belt. So they're not filling the red belt. Okay, let's take a look at this setup here. Let's see how much more do we have to go. We're almost done with this. Let me help these guys out. Clear those chests. And get rid of all that. Of my own worry. Alright, so let's turn that one on. Let's go red belts here with this. Upgrade this section to red belt. And let's take a look at how this does. So we can see that the inserters are trying to load the train, but they can't because the blue, the inserters on the other side are unloading it uh, faster than they can load. And the red belt is not getting full. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off the unloader for a second. We'll let the uh, wagon fill up a bit. And while we do that, we'll, uh, we'll unload these. I'm going to go ahead and set this to get rid of all this stuff constantly so I don't have to mess with it anymore. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, and you know what, we'll go ahead and shut off these unloaders again to give it a chance to fill the wagon before we start unloading. Well, you know what? Yeah, we'll do it like that. We'll do that. And so here, let's turn this on. Watch what happens. Oh, we forgot to turn on a yellow belt. I mean, go to red belt. Sorry about that. Let's... Unload that. Okay, that's off. Yeah, let's go to red belt here. OK, 
Okay, let's turn that on. Okay, Red Belt's doing a little bit better job of delivering materials to the six inserters, but they're not all busy all the time with, in this configuration. Uh, but we're filling up the wagon pretty good there. And let's get rid of this material. Let's upgrade that to Red Belt. And let's upgrade this one to Red Belt while we're at it. What's the matter, bots? Why aren't you working? I'm too busy. I don't have enough bots in the system. Is that what it is? Let me get some more out there. Come on, bots. There we go. Alright, guys. What's the matter? You don't have any place to put it? Box is full? Alright, let's get another box out there. Where am I? There we go. Let's get a couple more boxes out there. Okay. All right. So we are ready to. Um, Let's go ahead and unload this wagon. Let's turn this one off. So that stops loading those chests. And let's take a look at how this one unloads. So we can see the blue inserters are working hard. And they're able to fill that, that red belt. Moving all 30 items per second. They're able to keep up so that is pretty effective all right well, let's take a look at the stack inserters let's turn that off and obviously if the blue ones can do it the yellow ones can do more so they will obviously fill that belt also so there's an effective way and you can see that uh, all the inserters aren't working all the time because they just are overdoing it. But that's fine. I'll unload that wagon in no time. So that's just pretty good. And here we are with uh, four inserters instead of six. Let's see how they do. Okay, so we can see even when the uh, wagon is empty, the stack inserters can just about keep up and deliver almost a full red belt of material. So that's good to know. And that's bringing in two red belts worth and filling the wagon and then unloading the wagon. Uh, so that's Pretty effective and then finally let's take a look at this system here this ugly one and of course you guys can do whatever you want on this unload to make sure that you, you get everything out of there and onto the belt but you can see this is this particular setup is rather inefficient the way I've built it uh, because it's got a lot of a lot of jamming where the items just can't get onto the belt in any practical way so I'll leave that to you to figure out a better way to to do that unload if you decide to try that method all right so now we're gonna just we're not even gonna bother turning the this section at the blue belts because we can see that this is just a complete fail so we'll just let that finish well, then we'll take a quick look at blue belts and 
Let's see how they fare. I'm just gonna go ahead and upgrade that. Okay, I gotta turn these off. Oh uh, no, you know what? I'm just gonna upgrade them on the fly because at this point I've said enough. You guys can see what's happening here, so we'll just look at them, just watch them work for a minute, and you guys can come to your own conclusions on that. Uh, so let's turn this back on. Turn this back on. Okay, so there's fast inserters with full capacity of three, hand size of three. Um, unable to fill a blue belt with six inserters. Here are six stack inserters in this configuration, unable to fill a blue belt. I would blame the configuration here more than anything. Uh, here's two blue belts coming in, one blue belt going out, and this system is almost able to fill the blue belt. And here's one blue belt coming in to the tree method and still jamming on this unload because that's just a horrible unload situation right there. All right, guys, so there you have it. There's at least your unloading and unloading speeds on your inserters and belt capacities and things. And I'm going to leave it to your imagination to figure out a way to make sure that you end up with full belts coming out. Because uh, for UPS and FPS, you want to have full belts as much as possible. Because uh, if you, a long full belt is uh, just one calculation. Versus any, if you have gaps in your belt, that causes the, the um, program to have to do more calculations to figure out what's going on with your belts. So there you have it, guys. Uh, well, that was almost 30 minutes. It took longer than I thought it would, but uh, hopefully I gave you some ideas and gave you a couple of tips there about what to do and what not to do when you're loading your trains and unloading your trains. And uh, I hope you guys continue to enjoy playing Factorio. Please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, and we will see you next time. Thank you.